It's got to be complete. When I used to watch these guys on The Tonight Show, like a Gary Sh- Did you know Gary right. Shanley? Sure, he was my buddy, yeah. Oh, he was? Yeah, yeah. Were you Gary. one of the guys who goes and played basketball no, at the I house? never did that, but every time... Bar- Gary owned a boxing gym with Peter Berg in right. Santa Monica, so every time I went to L.A., I would meet Gary there, and we would we would box together and then go have lunch and talk. Was Gary a good athlete, Gary Shanley? He, well, he cared about it, and uh, he was in, he stayed in good shape, yeah. And, and when you would box him, he had the height advantage, right? He's taller than you. No, I don't think he I don't feel like he was taller Why do I feel me? like he was a tall no. guy? How tall are you? Six, what? Six-ish. You're six, yeah. and he is the same? I think so. Because the last time I saw him was at Jimmy's house. Were you there at Jimmy's house when Gary was there? Maybe years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know, yeah. but uh, I, I remember thinking, eh, Gary's a lot taller than I remember him. Mm. But, but oh, so you were close with the guy. Shocking uh, yeah. that he just kind of died. Yeah, Did you I mean, know he his, was ill? His health was a little, He was, there was something going on with him. I don't know what it was, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I was totally shocked. It was very upsetting. Yeah. Uh, He's a great, really smart guy, or oh. super funny and super nice, thoughtful I- I obviously love the Larry Sanders show as yeah, everyone did. Greatest, the but greatest. his stand up on the Tonight Show was always fucking strong. He was one of the best ever to do that. I mean, he was should have t- he had the shot to take it over back when everybody was jogging. Right. For, he yeah. could have had it. And he he said, didn't want it. He said, "I'd rather pretend I have that job," and uh, that, and and then, which is what Larry Sanders was. And that was breakthrough television. I showed it to my 14 year old daughter the other day. Right after he died, I showed her. This is my friend who just died, and I showed her the p- first episode of Larry Sanders, and she was howling. She loved it. Oh. it, it holds up. Every character was great. Hey, now. You know, hey, yeah. all of it. I yeah. mean, I just love it. Yeah. And and Gary was actually really nice to me. He was a very generous mm-hmm. guy. I needed a guest for the first time I ever had an e-television show, and he agreed to do it, which nobody wanted to do it. I mean, right. you know, they didn't want to yeah, this was, was this <laughs> a test show? <laughs> yeah. You no, know, it wasn't a test show, but it, it was going to air. But it was nice uh-huh. of him to come. And, yeah. And, you know, it wasn't clear what we were going to be doing. Right. And um, and and then I, I actually got to be on the Larry Sanders show, which was fucking Yeah, fun. I remember. Yeah, that was that really was funny. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, I was really sad and to see that he uh, was gone. Was he one of those guys that you would run material by ever and say, hey, I'm looking for a punchline? Um, we talked about comedy, but not in terms of jokes. We right. talked about what it felt like. He was an incre- He's one of those guys who he went through so much. He's, way ahead, you know, he... He's a mentor, you know, right. and he was very generous with sharing with me what it felt like to get the Tonight Show the first time and all the breaks that he had. Yeah, there is this trip you go down as a stand-up when you do well that is very rare. There's only a few people that have gone that far. Right. So when you get a guy like that to share with you what it felt like, and I'm it was shocked, a huge thing when he decided to become a stand-up comedian. Um, it was a very short amount of time that he got the tap uh, on the shoulder from Johnny Carson's talent right. scouts. I mean, it was like like maybe in, a, in within a year. Yeah, it was very soon into his. Yeah, and was, that he ain't, was great. He was great. He was a genius. And he was also classic. You know, he had this big smile. He was like a cartoon. You know, and self-effacing. That's right. He understood that he wasn't a ladies' man, and then he talked right. about dating, and we all related to it, right? That's right. Yeah, no, he was great. But he also had this face that was kind of like expressive, you know, yeah. like he had this look yeah, like you saw the pain i didn't i mean i might be wrong on this but like you used the shanling quote yeah in the one episode yeah which i'm sure had partly to the fact that he just passed away and you yeah. wanted to pay tribute to him. everything to do yeah but it also kind of i thought that that seemed to be what the show was it about, had something at least to a little do with bit, the show but the show's kind of about like silences right and the, just yes, the, and the, and the silence versus conversation mm-hmm. yeah is that um, a misread that was that was Tate's big suggestion. No, that was right. I think that I mean after you broke Tate. Ga- <laughs> well, Gary uh, uh, and I were friends. Yeah, and uh, he wrote that to me in an email. It wasn't like a quote. Oh, I that pulled wasn't from like his, from his stand-up. No, it's something he really? said to me in an email. Um, about uh, two weeks before he died, uh, he wrote that to me. Was there a reason behind it? Yeah, I. He wrote to me about, and I don't really want to. I don't yeah, want to yeah, go yeah. into this fucking thing because it was such a stupid episode. But when I wrote an email about Donald Trump to my fans, and it kind of exploded a little yes. more than I expected it to, and Gary wrote to me and sort of made fun of me about the email, and I wrote back and forth, and he was, I was a little distressed at, that I got too much more attention from it than I wanted to. Yeah, and uh, and and we started to write back and forth just about life and stuff, and then he wrote that to me. Amongst other things, and uh, I went through this email that he had written to me, and it was so full of very moving. And he he is a very he was a very deep person. And all the time I ever spent with Gary, 
um, we would just talk and talk for hours. And then I always felt like we didn't get anything. We didn't have enough time. Do you know what I mean? Um, but so he wrote me that email and I found about 10 things that applied to the show, <laughs> applied to life, applied to him passing and yeah. how I felt about it. And so I threw it on the, on the end there. Um, it's, he's such a curious guy. I only spent one extended stretch on them, but yeah. he's one of those guys you just could have talked to for 12 hours. Like he would have been a great guy to drive cross country with. That's right. Yeah. Just like no, that's what I love. What we would. Do. He owned a, a boxing gym. Yeah. Uh, on uh, the west side with uh, Peter P Peter Peter Berg, Peter yeah. Berg uh, Wild Card West. Uh, they called it. Yeah. And uh, and I worked out there with him a bunch of times. I would come to town and I'd write him and say, "Do you want? Can we work out today?" So we would go and he would get a young trainer, um, and we would you know work in tandem with the trainer. You know, one of us would hit the pads. And then the other one would, you know, and then vomit while the other one hit the pads. You know, like we're just, we're both around the same age and shape. And then after training, we would go have lunch. And sometimes we would just walk in one direction for hours and just talk. And then walk back to the car and just and just leave. Um, and my friendship to him came a little late, late. I didn't really know Gary until like, I don't know, two, two years ago or something, three years ago. Um, but it became a real constant for me. It was a really, he was very generous with talking about the road from nothing to success, which he had an amazing run. Yeah. Um, and he shared a lot about what, what goes on inside the inner workings of a person during those kind of big, exchange, big changes. So he was a great friend, you know, uh, he wrote me a month before he died. He was in Hawaii, and I don't know what was going on with him health-wise, but he was, you know, he was convalescing from something or whatever. whatever. But um, he wrote me something about wasting. T oh, he wrote me this thing saying that uh, wasting time is part of being creative. That's what he said. Uh, he said that, and he sent me some chapter of a book. I forget what it is, but about that being true. It was something about how Einstein used to, like, sit around and just do dumb things before he w then went and s figured everything out. Um but he said wasting time is part of being creative. That was the message to his email. And at the end, he said, uh, um, I don't know how much time I can keep wasting because I'm certainly not a teenager anymore. Like how yeah. much time I have left to waste, maybe three, four weeks or something like that, which ended up being exactly how long he he made it. But uh, anyway, so, yeah, that quote that he he had died only a couple of days before and I was posting the show. And so I called my editor and asked her to throw it on, throw it on the end there. Did he ever give you feedback on uh, the Louis show? Um, no, no, I never asked him about it. Uh, although he read the, he read the first two episodes of Horace and Pete, uh, before I started making it and he really loved it. His, his, actually the way that he loved it gave me a lot of juice to keep writing. Cause at that point I was just writing scripts and I didn't know if they were any good, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Pop every time. There's a quote from Gary, uh, Gary Shandling. The world is just too noisy and distracted to probably ultimately survive. Everyone needs to shut the fuck up. The answers are in the silence. Monks set themselves on fire to make this point. Just consider it. Mm -hmm. What does that quote mean to you? Well, Gary wrote that to me in an email. I know. And uh, it was, he wrote that to me a, a few weeks before he died. Just a few weeks. Yeah, maybe a couple of weeks before he died. Yeah. And uh, Unexpectedly. He was a great friend, and he was the kind of guy I could talk to him for hours, and then we never had enough time. Like, we talked for four hours, and my mouth would get all dry talking to Gary, and I would get, like, a headache because I wouldn't want to drink water or do anything to stop talking to him. And then it'd be over, you know? We'd have to part company, so... I always um, thought about him. He came to my show. I always thought about him as, God, I just wish... I wish he was doing something right now. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I know what he was you mean. That good, and you just he was one of the best ever. I know. Yeah, one of the greats. And and why the hell is he? You would ask yourself. Yeah, well, he gave a lot. He gave a lot of great stand up, and uh, and his series was the, and, and, a lot oh, of TV has been built on the back on, of that exactly series. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, a lot and, of people and, don't remember that. And he was terrific, even when he substituted for Carson. That's right. I showed uh, the first episode of Larry Sanders to my fourteen-year-old daughter after he died. And she loved it, and it was fresh, you know. And she watches like Thirty Rock and new shows, and this show is—it's right up against them, and it cre and it and it begat them, you know. Yeah.